All right, hey guys. So I had a request earlier today around how to figure out whether a particular user profile exists or user exists in Office 365. So what I did was I, you know, first thing you can look at is a user profile action, which is query user profile. Unfortunately, if the user doesn't exist at that particular uh, time, then what happens is that action fails and right? causes a workflow to fail. And there's really no kind of way around it. Now, what I thought was maybe there's a different way of doing it. Maybe we can actually uh, query something else, maybe through a web service or something like that. Now, I came up with this idea. So ignore this branch here, right? Because that breaks. So look at this right branch. The first thing I'm doing is I'm just putting together uh, an email address. Now, if I actually just jump back to my portal here, I have an email address right here called danb at ntxt01. Now, in order for us to query, what we're going to do is we're actually going to call a SharePoint Online REST endpoint to query for a particular property for a user. Now, I found that it does not support taking just an email address. It actually needed the full bit, which is that whole I colon zero hash, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it's basically I'm just adding all that to the email address. Now, the next thing I'm doing here is doing a replace substring. What I'm doing is actually replacing that hash with a percentage 23. Again, I think that's more of a URL, so it's basically doing some URL encoding, uh, some very simple URL encoding. But taking the original user email and storing it back uh, to the same variable. Okay. Now, the next thing we're doing is we're actually putting together the URL to the endpoint. Now you'll notice I've got my URL to just a subsite, so this is not going back to the admin portal or tenant admin portal or anything like that. It's just calling this particular site. And in here we're calling underscore API and the sp.userprofiles.peopleManager. Now the method we're calling is called get user profile property for, and then we have the account name and we're inserting that variable that we have and the property name that we want. Now I went through the user profiles just to see all the different properties that are there. And I thought, you know what, the best one to look at is this user profile underscore good, right? That's the ID or internal ID of a particular user. That way, I'm going to assume that if that user is not there, we don't have that particular user with that account name, then I should get back an empty ID. Okay, so now we're storing that in the text URL. All right. Now you'll notice here I have a call HTTP web service and a web request action. Now this actually did work for me, the call HTTP web service. Let's pop this open. So you can see I've got my URL, I've configured to do a get. I get the response back into a dictionary variable and I also get the status code. Now this worked for me, but what I found was that I was running this as an admin, so of course it's going to work. If you're not an admin, this won't work for you, right? So this is why I actually decided to disable this action instead use the web request, because the web request still allows me to do the same sort of thing, there's my URL, I'm doing a get, I'm not passing anything in the body, but here I can actually pass in some credentials. So I can put in some sort of admin credentials that have access to user profiles, right? Now the only difference is, is the data that comes back, instead of it going into a dictionary, this is actually gonna come back as XML into a text uh, variable. So pretty straightforward there. Now, if I can just jump into here, this is basically the type of data that you will get back. So if I can expand it. Now, there's the node, the XML node, D colon, get user profile property for. And what you want to do is find that node and you want to pull out the data because that's the ID. Makes sense, hopefully. Okay, and all I'm doing is running a query XML action using that response in there. There's my XPath expression to get that D colon, get user profile property for. And I'm storing, I'm ignoring this query result in. I'm just giving the text, which is like the internal data, and I'm storing it, uh, storing it in a text variable called text response, so back into its original uh, variable. And then I will have an actual ID. Now the cool thing about this is, so let's say, let's ignore all this, is I could do something like this. Let's drag a conditional branch action onto there, and then we'll say text response. is not empty and we'll let's just dummy up some some actions in here. All right, we'll add 
a couple of log actions. So in this one you could just say the user exists and this one could be user does not exist. There we go. So pretty straightforward, right? It's just a different way of querying SharePoint to get some information, but just make sure that if you run it and you get so any sort of, uh, you know, access deny type issue, that's most likely a performance, uh, a, uh, you know, some sort of access denied issues is really around, you're not the user that's able to access that sort of information. So definitely looking to maybe using a user that has greater, uh, great permissions. That's what I was looking for, permissions. So yeah, use that and that should, should work for you. All right, I'm gonna just pop this open again. So you'll see, doing a get, my, in this case, my admin and storing the response. And what does the URL look like? It's got the underscore API slash sp.userprofiles.peoplemanager slash get user profile property for, and then in brackets, account name equals, and then whatever the account name is, and then property name equals. There's a bunch of different properties inside of uh, Office 365, so you can pull out anything that you want, but I thought the user profile good is gonna be the best one for me, because I can guarantee there's going to be data there if the user exists. All right, on that note, that's all I have. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm actually really interested in what other REST services you guys might be calling uh, that might make things a little bit easier to automate. Thanks for your time, guys, appreciate it.